Hello everyone. So in the last video we talked about the a basic water circuit. And so today we're going to be talking about a basic electric circuit and we'll see how closely these two things parallel each other. So to reiterate essentially what we have here is two tanks, an upper tank and a lower tank. And it's this difference in height or difference in gravitational potential energy that causes the water to then flow through and release that stored energy and then do something useful. And then because it has a pump that repumps the water, you just get this continual flow or this continual difference in potential energy, which then uh, turns this water wheel. So it turns out that it's very, a very similar thing happens in electric circuits. Only instead of water, we're moving electrical charges, namely electrons. So how do you get electrons to flow? In a, in a very similar way, uh, in a way that's very similar to how we're getting the water to flow here. We're getting the water to flow through a difference in gravitational potential energy. In electric circuits, we get the water to flow through a difference in electric potential energy. A good example of electric potential energy would be if you take a balloon and you rub it on your head, suddenly it attracts to things, right? It'll stick to walls, things like that. Now think about what happens. So you've got a balloon, you stick it on the wall. Think about what happens if you pull that balloon away. You're doing, you're expending energy to pull that balloon away because it's, it's wanting to be attracted to the wall. So what are you doing? You're actually producing electric potential energy. Um, you're pulling that back and you're storing energy, just like you could take a, a rock or even your water in this case, and if you move it up against gravity, you're storing gravitational potential, potential energy. And in the same way, you can store electric potential energy, and then you can release it. And if you let the balloon go, it would then go back to the wall, just like you can store the gravitational potential, potential energy and then release it and let it fall. A very similar thing happens in electric circuits, where basically a battery or a voltage source is basically a continual, it produces a continual difference in potential, which causes a continual flow. So let me sketch out a basic, basic electric circuit here. So typically, the, the, the symbol that we use, uh, schematic symbol for a battery or voltage source, this is more of a generic voltage source, is just a circle and a plus and minus. So this is like the upper tank. And then the minus side is like the lower tank. And so just like when you have two tanks of different heights, um, if you connect something across these two tanks, like the water wheel with pipes, then you'll get some water flow. In the same way, if you connect an electrical component, like maybe a light bulb, um, um, or an LED or a motor or something like that, then you will get a flow of electrical current or a flow of electrons. So for example, you could hook um, a light bulb across here. So I'll go ahead and sketch my light bulb. Um, not the best sketch in the world, but you get the idea. Um, <laughs> and um, gives off some light. And, and so um, essentially, just like the turbine has some resistance, 
um, the light bulb also has some resistance. And an electrical current, when you connect it, will flow. We can designate that as I. And we can designate the voltage, the amount of voltage as V. And the same Ohm's law relationship governs this circuit. V equals I R. And again, this is like a really intuitive uh, sort of principle, but very fundamental. We use it all the time in circuits. And it makes sense. I mean, it definitely makes sense in this mechanical version, right? Um, what this equation is saying is that if you were to look at, let's say you, you were looking at, a, at this system and you were, and you noticed that the current was really large. Like in other words, there was, the water was just moving super fast through the circuit. And let's say you also noticed that this turbine was like, or the water wheel was huge. And let's say you noticed that the, the bearings were like super rusty too. And so it was just like really putting, it was, there was a lot of resistance to it. And yet, even so, the water was flowing super fast and the wheels turning really fast. Well, that's got to tell you then that the difference in height within these tanks has got to be huge in order to provide that much energy to be able to spin even a rusty turbine or a rusty water wheel really fast. So just kind of that intuition. It's the same, same thing going on here with this basic electric circuit. So the only difference here is the units. So voltage um, in an electric circuit uh, actually let me change this. Okay, voltage in an electric circuit, the units are joules per coulomb of charge. A coulomb is basically a certain number of electrons. Um, so a coulomb is equal to approximately equal to 6.3 times 10 to the 18th electrons, so a lot. And, and so um, uh, essentially what this is saying is that if one, uh, if you have, let's say you, if you have one volt, one volt of um, uh, voltage here on this, on this source, if a coulomb of electric charge or, or this number, that number of electrons <laughs> flows from the positive or the upper tank to the lower tank, that means one joule of energy was released. If it was two volts, it'd be two joules of energy. And so the, the, Equivalent is thinking of this in terms of gallons. Uh, if you had one volt of uh, voltage here between these two tanks, that would mean that if a gallon of water were to flow from this uh, upper tank to the lower tank, one joule of energy would be released. If it was two volts, it would be two joules. Same idea. So then current, instead of gallons per minute, that's going to be coulombs per second, the amount of electrons that are flowing by a wire per second. And then we have resistance. And that's equal to your voltage divided by your current. And the unit for that um, is the ohm, and typically that's designated as omega. So those are your units, and that pretty much summarizes uh, the uh, comparison here. And of course, you know, the circuits we analyze in this course are gonna start to get much more complicated, but hopefully that gives you an idea of how the most sim ba simple basic circuit works. Now, before I go, one thing I want to mention is that um, I have basically drawn the current as flowing from the positive to the negative side. And um, I've been talking about how electrons flow, which they do. And electrons are negatively charged particles. Um, 
but it actually turns out that they actually flow from the negative side of the battery to the positive side. And uh, typically though in circuits, we actually talk about a current um, that flows from the positive to the negative end of the battery as, a, as, um, as positively charged particles. And the reason for that is due to like a mistake that Benjamin Franklin made. And by the time the mistake was found out, uh, we couldn't really fix what everyone got used to. So um, just know that in this course, we will be using conventional current flow, which means we, were, we uh, think of current as a flow of positively charged particles flowing from the upper to the lower tank. Um, we think of it that way, uh, even though we know that in reality, it's actually negative electrons that are flowing the other way. Um, so that's just something to kind of keep in the back of your mind. All right. Thanks, everybody. See you in the next video. Hello, everybody. Thanks for watching. If you found this content helpful, uh, would you please consider liking and subscribing to the channel? That will help other people find it. And if, if you won't do it for me, will you do it for my cat, Muon? Named after my favorite subatomic particle, by the way. So, um, she will be very, very upset if you do not like and subscribe. So please, um, don't, don't disappoint. How, how could you say no to this cuteness?